Welcome to Hard Questions, where we gather pastors together to take on your tough questions and answer them right from the Bible. I'm Tom Hollis, the moderator, and today our panelists include... Dr. William R. Glaze, Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh. Pastor Buck Shaver, Grace Life Church in Monroeville. Pete Giacalone, Abba Father Ministries, traveling the world. <laughs> J. Anthony Gilbert, Another Level Ministries in Mount Washington. Well, thank you so much for joining us, pastors, including traveling the world pastor here, <laughs> changing the ministry there, brother. But, uh, you know, this is a, a very special uh, hard questions around the whole issue of race and reconciliation. Uh, pastors, we all know uh, in our society right now because kind of spawned by what we saw in the video uh, with George Floyd, but, but revealing what is in society and what is uh, an issues that, that are there that need to be dealt with and need to be talked about and need to be talked about in a Christian perspective as well. And I just want to start off, uh, you know, some may say that, that racism isn't prevalent in our culture anymore. Incorrectly, they would say that. But what would you say to them? And I, I'd just like to ask Dr. Glaze to start off. Well, you know, I would say that it is. And uh, What's I've, your experience? Yeah, and I, I was going to say, I've been a victim of it. Uh, my son, when he graduated from college, uh, he moved to uh, Tucson, Arizona. And I, you know, said, told him that I would ride out with the, the helping ride. And so we were in uh, Oklahoma, coming into Oklahoma. And you know how you have those uh, toll booths? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, when you're in a, a strange place, you're trying to figure out, you know, yeah. which, which yeah. I mean, do I go to easy pay, the pay, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm trying to look, and then all of a sudden, you know, I kind of see the one I'm supposed to be in, and I turn. Well, as soon as we go through, uh, we're pulled over by two state troopers. And uh, he says, do you know that you made a, a turn without putting on your turn signal? And he, I, I'm, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, you got a case, but You changed yeah. lanes. Yeah, All right. you did was change yeah. lanes. So, so he, he told me to get out of the car mm. and go sit in his car. He sat in the car with my son, talked to my son for about 15 minutes. And then came, in, in, in the meantime, there's a guy standing out outside of our car, you know, with a, with a rifle, mm. uh, you know, state policeman. And so then he comes back and starts talking to me. And uh, I don't know if he was profiled us, you know, because, you know, we were black and maybe he thought that we had drugs. We had out of state license plate. So, you know, I, you know, I mean, that's, that's just one experience. So I, you know, I have personally experienced, you know, profiling and it's, it's not, it's not pleasant because, you know, one, one of the things that I realized, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quiet well, take your time. that as a, uh, uh, I mean, let's put, you know, in, 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 at our church, we have a great relationship with the Pittsburgh police. Great relationship. I mean, you know, they come to our events, they block off the street, they, I mean, so, you know, I have, I have no complaints. But there's one thing that I realized that most black men in America, whenever they see a police, off, a police car pull behind mm -hmm. them or beside them, I don't know about anybody else, but the first thing I think, what happens if this goes wrong? You know, yeah. wow. what can happen? I mean, that's, that's just a thought in my mind. Sure. So I'm yeah. not sure if, if Jay would have that same kind of thought, but you know, you know that's, mm -hmm. that's the thought as a black man in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one of the things I wanna say is, cause people say it's not prevalent. And I think a lot of time they gauge it from the standpoint that uh, we're not where you were growing up in the 60s and 70s, because we're not. And for people to think that they've experienced racism like your generation oh did, gosh. they have no clue. Is it still prevalent? Without a doubt. Has the marching and the demonstrations that people did in the 60s made way? Of course, we had a black president in 2008, mm -hmm. the most powerful seat in the world. So obviously there's been changes, but there's still, it's still there. And I've had it in my life. I mean, uh, I remember I was dating, there's a little humor here. I was dating a girl and uh, her, her father didn't like black men. And uh, she liked me, poor guy. Uh, but anyways, she had good taste. Uh, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Taste, we'll turn Let this down. You. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. What's up? But, gonna, but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, bud. But it was funny because like all of a sudden I went in and she said to him, he goes, "What is he Italian?" And I was like, "No, he's not Italian." I was like, "He's black." You know, it's just the way it is. And uh, but I mean, whether it's dating people, being at a party when I was a young boy, and hearing things, being ostracized. But this is the thing a lot of people don't get. Me being mixed. 
they didn't know that actually I was profiled against blacks and whites. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. black people said I wasn't black enough. And so they would tell me I wasn't wow. a true brother as I was growing up yeah. because I didn't have the nappy hair and couldn't do the high top fade and all that. <laughs> and then with the white people, I couldn't fit Double in because I, I really did. And I battled with both of those growing up. <laughs> I didn't fit in with blacks or whites. And I was picked on, bullied by black people because I was mixed and I was pretty. So, you know, they didn't like that. <laughs> but but, the reality, but I dealt with both of those, not yeah. just white, but also with black as yeah. well. A lot of people don't realize that being mixed wasn't always easy to grow up with. So I've experienced it on both sides of the and table. Jay, as a grandfather, I see my granddaughter who is gorgeous. She's 18 and she is half and half. And it breaks my heart sometimes because my son recently wrote a beautiful, beautiful article being the father of a child that's half black and half mm -hmm. white. Mm -hmm. And what he wrote was just amazing. And the heartache, because my Malena is, she's 18, she's gonna be 19, July 4th. Uh, she is just absolutely gorgeous. But the socialness that she goes through, even today, it breaks my heart. And it was a black gal, and, th and this gal was African black. All right, she wasn't light tone that came into my son's life many, many, many years ago that changed his life radically. And they were, they were dating in high school and, and, and my wife and I would see it many times at the church. We were so saddened how that we would be off the side where people didn't see us and they would come in hand in hand and we'd see many folks just shaking their heads. Mm -hmm. It wow. broke our hearts. Wow. It broke our hearts. Wow. You know, and these are born again believers. Now, are we judging them today? No, no. It's, it's something that they have to work through. We all have to work through prejudice. And uh, it, it was, uh, but this gal, now Pete never married this gal, and he didn't have our daughter Melena to this gal. But, but the, what I'm trying to say is, we saw, matter of fact, when I took my son to Bible college in the deep south, Ozark Mountains. Uh, the, the gal came along to go see what the school was like, looked like, you know, and then I brought her home. Um, and uh, the, the, the sad thing was uh, the dirty looks that they got in restaurants uh, was, was appalling. Well, let, let, me, let me move into a second question here, and Buck, I'll, I'll ask you this. What is racism? What exactly mm. is racism? What, well, what, you know, how do we define that? I think you, you look at superiority over another race, yeah. uh, uh, arrogance, a uh, pride, um, uh, uh, prejudice, uh, not acceptance of this diversity that God created. Mm -hmm. And really, j just like everything else, a lot of stuff's rooted in arrogance and pride. There you go. And so, you know, when you let that in your heart, uh, I agree with all you guys. When you, when you see this stuff, it's sad. My father took me as a young kid. We went to Oakmont Baptist and on the way, my, my father said he always had all kinds of color around him like sure. foreigners. And so he said, son, let's stop off and see my, my, my brother Jocko Rice sing in a choir. It was all black church. Yeah. And so I went up there and as a little kid, I, I think that my father helped dismantle that. That's right. I was in That's Hazelwood, right. the Abriol yeah. Auto Stores. My family sold more parts, auto parts to people. And I said, daddy, I was, I think four. I said, there's a chocolate man. And my dad pulled me over and with tears in his eyes, he said, young, young man, he said, these have been through so much racial tension. And I remember as a little kid, he said, there's not black, there's not white, and, and, and there's just one kind of human race. We all have yeah. red blood. Yeah. And geez, so my father kind of helped dismantle that. So I was in a Department of Corrections home with all African-American young men working with them. And so my whole life was surrounded. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I call that... Uh, a privilege to grow up with people of color because yeah. I think it helps dismantle that demonic, what it is. It's a mm -hmm. demonic, not a skin right. problem right. that his skin's a little darker than mine, his is a little darker. It's a sin problem. Amen. And there I think at go, the Buck. core of men and women, racism is demonic. It's created to divide. And he who isolates himself seeks his own desire, rages against all wise judgment. It's rooted in selfishness. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. It can be economical, sociological, right. skin color. The devil loves division. And a house divided, divided. against itself yeah. 
cannot stand. Absolutely, them. absolutely. Pastor well, Glaze. You know, and that, that's an excellent definition of uh, racism. And, and I'd like to take it a step further, you know, and, and define systemic racism. Mm -hmm. Because I think that, that that's the root, what, what Buck uh, said, Inter yeah, that's the root. Yeah. But now when, when you look at the fact of, uh, you know, black men being killed by police, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at uh, black people, you know, not being able to get loans, uh, yeah. You know, when you look at the fact that, you know, apartment, you know, if, if you try to get an apartment, no, no, this is not in every situation, but in a lot of situations, yeah. uh, you know, they, they'll talk to you, but when you show up and they see that you're yeah. black, then, you know, <laughs> well, well, you know, we rented it last week, you know, you know, that oh, type cool, thing. Yeah. Uh, racial profiling. So, that, you, know, yeah. you know, he did a beautiful job defining racism. Yeah. But this is like the byproduct, the systemic yeah, part yeah. that mm -hmm. still, you know, resides. And a lot of That's people good. say, hey, everything is all right. You know, there's no problems today. But, you know, th this, this is at the root of a That's lot it. of things That's that we uh, see. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, along that line, Pastor Glaze, things are written now so that that stuff doesn't happen, but yet it still happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? And so battling this systemic racism, that's where we need to be. You know, we need to be. Obviously, we all need personally sure. to, to not fall into what, you know, to, to what your dad did such a good job of keeping you out of, Buck, to understand that, that everyone is God's children, everyone is, is equal. But, but what do we do, Pastor Jay, maybe you could comment, what do we do to battle systemic racism? Well, you know, in our society too, I believe it's, it's been happening. You know, I wanna to go to something you said, you have to uproot. I believe this is a season where a lot of the major things are, you know, people, black people can vote now, we can do a lot of different things, but there's a lot of things within, I know time is short, I, I know that there's a lot of things that we have to, these statues, some of these statues, Confederate flags, I think there's a lot of things that are hidden silence right. that need to be dealt with, so then what happens, we get rid of the root, right. so this stuff doesn't keep sprouting up every so often. That's good. Well, we are gonna take a, a short break, but stay tuned for more hard questions after this. Welcome back to Hard Questions, discussing race and reconciliation. Pastors, I'd like to ask you this. How should the body of Christ be part of the solution to racism? That's where we really want to go. Yeah. Now, for those who want to be part of the solution within themselves, you know, what do we do? Well, you know, Romans 12, 1 says, you don't overcome, I'm sorry, you don't overcome evil with evil. The only way evil can be overcome, it's got to be overcome with good. It's got to be overcome with love. So um, if, if, you know, throwing bricks and, and burning down buildings, that's not going to get anything accomplished. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I had the joy for 16 years. I still love McKeesport. I had the joy of pastoring there for 16 years, and I'll still do whatever I can to, to be a blessing to that city. But I remember when I first went there, I, I so gun ho I would go to rallies. And I remember going to all black evangelical churches. But many times being there, you know, like, like celebrating Martin Luther King, because I wanted to, to support and encourage. But I have to tell you the truth, Dr. Times, I was felt to believe you have no right to be here. Well, let, let, let's, you know I mean? so, well, let's go and, around let's go around the horn because I want to get back to something about the protests too. But yeah, Dr. Glaze. You know, I, I've been reading this book uh, by Derek Mason. It's called Woke Church, and a powerful book. I, I think that every Christian ought to read this book. But in, in the book, what he talks about is is how that the body of Christ, you know, that have been transformed by the power of Christ, you know, that they haven't been speaking to these issues. And, and, and one of the things that he points out in the book is that uh, that churches and, and he's specifically speaking to white churches, you know, ought to educate their people on this whole issue because, you know, for, for so long, you know, they haven't thought that there was a problem. You know, they've kind of closed the blind eye to yeah. it, you know. And, and again, I know we're going to talk about it in a, in, in a, uh, later on about the, the, the flag, the Confederate flag and all the symbols. But, you know, that, that a lot of people see nothing wrong with those yeah. things. Right. And, and so I think the church that has the true power to transform 
you know, ought to, ought to be, a, you know, speaking to these issues. Now, I know there's a whole lot of other things that the church can address, sure. a whole lot of other, but I think that, and not every church is gonna be called to, to do this, but I think that some churches ought to address, you know, the, the injustices in our country. Amen. Amen. And, and Tom, if I can show this in real quick, what, what I was saying, not all, not all, I, I gotta emphasize this because not all did not make me feel uncomfortable, but just a, 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 a few made me feel like you have no right in being here. Amen. And I gotta Amen. emphasize not all, right. because that's not right. Mark, what can we do? You know, I think uh, what we've done is, I, I don't think this is some big monumental thing you can address at a governmental level. It's a, it's a heart level. Yes. So the church has to lead in this. If the church doesn't lead in this, that's a problem. Because Sunday morning, like Dr. King said, can be the most racist, yes. segregated hour of the Absolutely week. Absolutely right. So what we've done, if we purpose in our heart to bring unity through, cultivating relationships. One of the goals 10, 15 years ago is like, let's model music. You know, and, and, and we have conversations with black couples in our church, probably now in the last three months, mm -hmm. hundreds of meetings. Pastor, why don't we model some good gospel music? Because we want people to feel at home, right? Mm -hmm. why, don't we, why don't we have leaders? Not just that we say put a guy up there because he's black. We really right, love right, each right, other. Right, right, right. This man leads yeah, in our church and we got it going on because yeah. we've had the conversation. Yeah. A gentleman, I didn't forget, we had some brothers come over and we did this racial reconciliation thing. He said, go to my church, go to my home and, and prepare dinner. He's a chef, phenomenal man of God. But when he got there, I didn't realize till a half a day later, he texted me, Pastor, I gotta be honest. He's a big three, 400 pound black man in an all white neighborhood. And he was going into my garage door and he said, something could have happened to me. Mm. And I, I, I didn't, and, and you know what? He said, his wife was crying. He said, I've been having dreams of an officer putting his mm. neck on my, his sure. foot on my neck. Yeah. And, I, and I, I said, here's what I said, here's what hit me as a pastor. I'm in my car two hours away and I started weeping. I said to my wife, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I didn't, I think yeah. that lies the problem. I didn't even think about it. Like yeah. when a young black boy gets profiled by a policeman, yeah. my child doesn't deal with that. But I thought I put this man at risk because I wasn't unknowingly, thinking. Unknowingly. Right, so I think yeah. the conversation, I love this scripture. Listen, Paul says, become all things to all people that might win some. I love the message Bible. I kept my bearings for Christ. I didn't take on their way of life. I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. And so I think in the church, if we experience, I, I, I had my brother over, I said, let's have barbecue ribs and let's do this and let's do that. And he looked at me and goes, pastor, I don't like that. I like Alfredo. So we have these, we have, we have these, we have, he's like, oh, ribs. He said, why are you the assume? Italian. So we presume yeah, and yeah. pre-assume yeah. things yeah, 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 and yeah. it's not right. And why is that? Because we haven't yeah. had the loving conversation right. Right. with the brother and I have brothers all around me and, and now I'm, I'm learning. You feel this way. I was in my office last week and this guy was telling how he felt coming out of COVID that, that black people mm -hmm. were, were twice susceptibly because of the diabetes and this and he was telling me this. And then he got up and I said, don't, the Lord said to me, don't have an answer. Just put your arms around him and love him. There you go. I held That's him for good. about 25 minutes and he, he just wept and there was a wet carpet. And the Lord said, how about we just love like yeah. Jesus? That is so mm -hmm. good. You know, Wonderful. that conversation's Amen. important, how you yeah. feel in a listening yeah. ear. I believe yeah. that's one of the answers. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Tom, a lot of times um, white individuals want to know what they can do. Yes. I mean, you know, I don't Sincerely. think black people are looking Sincerely. for like, you know, oh man, let me do everything for you. Get down, wash our feet and do everything for us. Because, we, you know, a lot of times I think the biggest thing you can do, is just like a woman, we're all married here. Uh, they want you to understand. Yep. Mm -hmm. you, you may not even be able to, un, you may not be able to comprehend everything and be able to say, oh, that makes sense. Because you, if you've never been profiled, you don't know yep. what that feels like. You, you just come in, your heart's completely pure, you're sitting down, you're getting yeah. ready to do something, and bam, somebody hits you over the head with something because of your color. That's and right. if, until you've been there, you don't mm -hmm. really have it, but to say, you know what, I'm sorry that that happened. You know, and then understanding is so, so vital. And yes. if you can do that, I think that's what most people are looking for. That's why the rioting and the looting and all, them people are just saying, would somebody please understand? Yes. Now they're going about it the wrong way, the rioting and the looting. Protest though, Correct. protest is Correct. fine. Protest Correct. is part of the process, but Correct. looting, rioting, wrong. But they're still yeah. saying, somebody yeah. just understand me. You know, that's what they want. That's why that's Black right. Lives Matter, all that. It's like, just understand. And if we can get to that mm -hmm. point, then what happens, it opens up the door to dialogue. That's right. If you'll yeah. understand me, think about it, even as, as a woman, you know, if I don't understand my wife, 
I can't talk to her. I can't talk analytically mm -hmm. to a person that's being emotional. So I've got to allow her to share those things. Baby, when I say, I understand, I totally get it. At that point, now the dialogue right. and healing yes. can begin to happen in that and situation. And you know, Jay, the, the beautiful right. thing about what we're seeing in our country today is that it's, it's more people of other ethnicities yes, sir. than it is of the, the people that have been the victims yes, of injustice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I look at it, and so people are hearing. Yeah. And, and you, know, yeah. you know, the sad yeah. thing is, is that it's the younger generation. Yeah. You know, that the older yeah. generations are, that the, some of them are out there, yeah. but they're, st they're so ingrained in their, in their thought right. process right. that they have a hard time of breaking loose. <laughs> but the, uh, the young people are out there, and that's powerful. I wanna, I wanna stay with you, Dr. Glaze, to ask this next question. Is true reconciliation possible? You know what, I'll be honest with you. You know, this is, the, the other brothers might have a different thought. I don't think so. Because yeah. as long as, you know, we're human beings mm -hmm. and we have sin natures, I think that you know it's it's always going to be a struggle, but I do think that the church, as Buck said earlier, has to has to take the lead mm -hmm. because if there's any chance for true reconciliation, it's going to be through the church. And that's, right. and, and, you know, that's the reason why the Bible says, Tom, guard your heart, because out of your heart flows the issues of life. Yeah. So yeah. if the believers now, I, I do not. The, I'm going to say this point blank: the world, yeah. the political system. They're clueless. They will never, you can have all the sit down talks you want. They will never be able to do what Amen. only the Spirit of God Amen. can do. Amen. And uh, I see you get so, it. I mean, it is certainly going to be through the Spirit of God, through the church, that we have reconciliation. We'll be back right after this. We always like to end the program with a scripture. And today we go to Mark where it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And that is so important. Pastor Jay, you were going to make a comment. You know, I think you mentioned going to reconciliation possible. That Christ gives us a total. Uh, because it says in 1 Peter chapter 2, mm -hmm. it says, Who when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. Yeah. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who bore our sins in his own body, that we would be healed. If we want to be agents of healing, when someone reviles us, we can't revile back. Ooh, when somebody, when we're suffering, we can't threaten, but we must follow Christ's example, which is hard. We must be willing to become an agent of healing. He took our stripes. He That's took so our hate. He took our sin. Mm -hmm to become an agent of healing in return. So if we want to be agents of healing, we must follow Christ's example, which is a hard one. That is a hard one, but that is a very good lesson. Pastor Glaze. You know, one of the things that's on my heart, because uh, I see it is prevalent in our society, uh, that, you know, I'm for Black Lives Matters. I mean, people that have it on their shirts, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. that have it on their cars, hey, I say, man, yeah, I, I agree with you, you know, and, and I wholeheartedly agree with the fact that you know we need to give value to lives that have Amen. been devalued for the long That's period right. of time. But I think we have to be careful because there's other groups that are coming along sure. and attaching their agenda to the Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. which you know I, I think that, that at that point, you know, it kind of discredits it. And so, you know, as as we speak to the body of Christ, I, I really want them to, you know, be aware of make sure you're supporting, you know, the, the injustice, the inequality of Black Lives Matter and not the social agendas that are That's attached good. to Black Lives Matter. And I, and I think from a, from a white person's perspective, there's a tendency to say, well, wait a minute, all lives matter. But when we say that, we're not understanding the history and the things that are there and the brokenness and the pain that is there that brings about the Black Lives Matters. Uh, well, and, and I heard somebody say, uh, not all lives matter until we realize that black, black lives, lives matter. matter. That's good. You know, so. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Good Buck, any, any last just you a know, few seconds? You know, I like Malachi, a reconciliation produced by repentance. That's I believe that we as ministers of reconciliation, the answer is Jesus and the church has to be That's the right. hope for the world. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's program. Look for part two coming up soon.